To all the geeks and nerds, welcome to my 1.14 crop farm tutorial. Now this crop farm is uh, primarily designed for carrots and potatoes, but it will also work for beetroot and bread as well. And this farm is super easy to build. There's no redstone, it's nice and compact. And yeah, we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of stuff about villagers, their schedule and how this whole thing works. So let's check it out. But before we get into the details of this farm and all the mechanics that are needed to make it work and also the block by block tutorial, I thought it was worth having a quick scoot around to take a look at this thing so you can see it in action. So this farm here has five different layers and uh, each layer we have uh, different crops. So at the top here we have some potatoes, then we have carrots on the next floor, then we have wheat, then beetroot and then some more carrots at the bottom just for good measure. And you can see here that this is pretty compact. Uh, the floor of one level is the ceiling of another. And uh, we've also tried to optimize here for lighting and also water sources. So inside each layer, there are no water sources taking up space uh, where crops could be planted. And also the lighting is all nicely hidden, uh, but we've made sure that lighting is correct so all of the crops can grow on all the spaces. Now we're coming to all the details of this uh, a bit later on. Now what's gonna happen here is all of the farmers go around here, harvest their crops. And when it comes to the right time of day, they come over to this side where they have their companion and they try and throw food to them uh, because that's part of the game now. And uh, when they try to do that, uh, the food never makes it to their counterpart. These uh, hopper minecarts suck it up instead and it goes down a hopper chain all the way down this, the, all the way down here into this hopper and then into this chest. So in here you can see I hope we've got a whole bunch of drops here. Um, we get more carrots and potatoes because uh, those those um, those crops drop more when they get harvested uh, but uh, also works for the beetroot and we get some bread because of the wheat now um in testing this, I've tested this for well over 10 hours, probably more like 20. And uh, if this was just carrots and potatoes, because of their drops, uh, we get about 2,000 um, per hour. That's for the whole five layers. So that means we're getting roughly 400 uh, carrots or potatoes uh, for each level uh, per hour, which is pretty good going. Not too bad, right? So here we are. It's pretty, as you can see, if we loot, just scoot around this thing, it's nice and simple to set up. There's no complicated redstone, anything like that at all. We're just using the villager AI and their schedule um, to make sure this thing works. All right, so let's get into the details of this thing. Then we explain how it all works and how you can build it. Before we get into the detail of this thing and how it all works, uh, it's important to check your Minecraft version. Now this farm has been designed for Java edition 1.14.3 and above. Uh, if you're running something different like Bedrock for example, then this may not work, um, but check the comments. I'm sure someone would have given it a try and uh, you can find out from that. Now let's get into the details of how this thing works. If you'd like to skip the detailed explanation of how this farm works, then there'll be a timestamp in the description so you can skip right ahead and just go to the build. But uh, if you'd like to learn all about how these uh, villagers work now and their schedule, then uh, that's what we're gonna talk about next. So if you wanna talk about a villager schedule, you need to first understand time. And time in Minecraft is, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit complicated. So let's go through it from the beginning. So a Minecraft day is uh, 20 minutes long. So that's uh, not just the daytime, that's day and night. One solar day is 20 minutes. Now in Minecraft, we have these things called ticks. Now a second is split up into 20 ticks. That's just something that happens 20 times a second and uh, the game processes a tick and does various things. Um, but yeah, so we can uh, do some maths here to work out how many ticks there are in total in a day. So if there are 20 minutes in a day and there are 60 seconds to a minute, we can multiply those together. And then there are 20 ticks per second, we can multiply that as well. When that would give us 24,000 ticks per day. So that is important. So if our day is 20, 24,000 ticks in total, uh, if, we can, if we look at this chart, we can see the number of ticks next to the time of day. So at zero ticks, we're, we're at 6 a.m. At 1,000 ticks, we're at 7 a.m. and so on. So every 1,000 ticks, uh, we move on one hour until we get to uh, 23,000, which is five o'clock in the morning. And then of course we go back back around uh, to six o'clock. So if you want to, uh, you can want to pause this and maybe look at those times, uh, they're all there for you. Now that's important for, for a few reasons. So first of all, in Minecraft, there is a command we can run uh, to change the current time. So if you run time set and then the number of ticks, that will change the time. So if we were to run uh, time set 6,000, we can look to our chart over here for 6,000 and that is 12 p.m. So that's lunchtime. Yay. <laughs> um, also in Minecraft, we have uh, some shortcuts. So we have day, noon, night, and midnight, and they correspond to these number of ticks in the day. So when we use our time set command, we can do time set noon, for example, and then noon, if you look up here is 6,000, which we already know is uh, 12 o'clock. Again, time for some lunch. <laughs> so that's important for later on. 
And here is the schedule for an employed villager. Now different types of villagers have different schedules, but we're going to focus on the employed ones for now uh, because they're the ones that are going to do some work in our farm for us. So here you can see that uh, an employed villager is idle from uh, from 10 ticks in the morning. And then uh, from 2000, they go to work. Uh, from 9000, it's their me time. From 11,000, they're idle. And from 12,000 is when they go to bed. Now over here, you can see as well that uh, the villager has certain times where they breed. So they breed when they're idle at these two points here at the top and the bottom and also that you can also breed at meat time as well. Now we'll talk about what these mean a bit later on uh, but that is the general schedule for an employed villager. And so let's kick off talking about the villager schedule and the first thing we're going to talk about is bedtime, the time that villagers go to sleep. So we can see from the schedule here that villagers will go to sleep at 12,000 ticks. Now uh, all these ticks and all these numbers can get quite confusing and so what I've done is I've added a new feature to my logical crafting data pack. There'll be a link in the description for you to download it and try it for yourself. Uh, but this provides us with a new, a new function once it's installed and that is this one right here. It is a uh, function, if, if you type in slash function logical clock on that will give us a new display right here uh, in front of us and it will show us the current time in ticks so we can see we're at 6,400 ticks currently and it also shows us the part of the employed villagers schedule so we're currently at work time so uh, if this villager here who's a farmer if he had some crops around he would uh, be tending to the crops and harvesting them but uh, let's let's skip forward uh, to 12,000 ticks and see this villager go to sleep so we can do that with our time set command as we saw earlier so we can do time set and if we put it just before uh, bedtime let's do 11,000 let's say 800 we should see that uh, it's getting dark and when this uh, when this timer hits uh, the 12,000 you should see this villager hop into his bed and go for a good night's sleep and there he goes <laughs> and you can see in our in our uh, data pack here we can see the display shows that time and also they're in sleep that's their schedule so uh, hopefully we can go through uh, some other parts of the schedule and you get the idea now for this farm, the sleep time is not that important because our villagers don't actually go to sleep. But uh, the thing that is important for this farm is the meat time. So let's talk about that. So meat is from 9,000 uh, to 11,000. So let's go on over here. So here we have a little setup uh, to demonstrate. So meat time, uh, what happens here is that if we have a village, uh, in the center of the village, we have a bell. And at meat time, all the villagers will congregate around this bell so they can share gossip and also some food and have a good old gym wag, you know? But um, yeah, we can we can leverage that in our farm. And we'll talk about the details about why this is important a bit later on. But let's just talk about meat time first of all. So uh, if a villager wants to uh, go to a bell, they have to be able to path find to it. So this villager here, if I remove this, this trap door and he sees this bell and it is uh, meat time, he won't be able to go towards it. He'll just stay over there because uh, this his pathway is blocked. Uh, he can see it through there, but uh, because these glass blocks are here, he can't path find to it. And so he'll just stick here. Now this villager over here, however, a very similar setup, uh, but there are no blocks in the way. Um, there are these minecarts, these hopper minecarts. They won't, uh, they won't stop him. Uh, but this, this, um, this trapdoor up here will. He won't be able to walk past it, but he think he can, he thinks he can. He thinks he can walk past uh, a trapdoor. So what we should do now is if we change this to uh, meet time. So let's change it with our set command again. So our time, time set let's say 9,000, which uh, is meat time. You can see our display changes. Now, if we uh, remove these uh, remove these trap doors, we'll see the one over there that thinks he can starts walking towards the starts walking towards the bell. And this guy over here just stays put. So the reason we're gonna do this in our farm, if we hop on over here, you can see that uh, over here by our villagers that uh, we wanna share food with, we have a bell. And that is because um, Sometimes these villagers, they can be over this side and when it gets to meat time, um, that's when they can share crops with uh, other, other villagers and we want to attract them together. So we use the bell. So when it gets to meat time, they'll see the bell and walk on over to this side and then they're close enough to these villagers to see them and then share their food. Now, out of interest, what is the range of a bell? Well, there are a couple of things to consider here. So here we have a bell in the center. And if you were to go out six blocks from the bell, so one, two, three, four, five, six, if you do that in all four directions and then join them up with these diagonal lines, this green area is the area that a villager wants to go to when it's meet time. So if I pop a villager over here 
and move out of the way so I don't distract him. He will realize that it's meat time. He seal that he will see that bell and walk over and hopefully land in that green area. There we go. So sometimes they path find a bit closer, but as long as he's inside the green zone, he is happy. Now let's get him out of the way so we don't uh, confuse things. But what is the, the range that uh, the villagers will be attracted? How far away from this bell can a villager be uh, before he starts walking? And the answer is 48 blocks, uh, including the, the block that the bell is on. So over here, I've marked that out. So here we have these, uh, these yellow glass blocks. So they are up to 48 blocks. So if I plop a villager down here, move out the way again, just so I don't confuse him, he should realize that it's meat time, as we can see from our display, and he'll walk on over to that bell. Now, before it gets to uh, <laughs> before it gets to um, the next part of the schedule, let's pop a villager down here. It's still meat time, but he's too far away and he won't move at all. He doesn't realize that there's a bell close by. Why is meat time so important? Well, at meat time, this is when the villagers can share their food together, for, share their crops. So both these, uh, both, both these farmers, uh, I've already given them a whole bunch of uh, carrots, uh, but uh, it's not uh, it's not meat time just yet. But when it gets to meat time, they will start throwing carrots at each other. So uh, in this instance, they'll just throw them to each other backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. But in our farm, we have some hopper mine carts in the middle, and they will capture those uh, carrots and then get them into our chest for us. So let's get let's move on to uh, let's move on to meat time and we'll see them sharing their carrots. There they go. <laughs> they start throwing them around. And this is what is actually happening inside our farm. The next part of the villager schedule to talk about is work time. That is from 2000 to 9000. And in terms of a farmer, what, a, what the farmer will do is if he's in a field with a bunch of crops like this guy right here, he will go around and obviously harvest these crops. He'll, um, if there's uh, ones that are ready to be picked, then he'll pick them up and he'll plant down other ones if there's any free area. So as you can see in this test setup, I've got this big area that is all farmland, it's all hydrated, and he's got access to this whole area. But what happens is as he's farming, he periodically goes back to his workstation, which is in the center. And that means that the furthest he will go is, uh, as we can see from these from this red glass. So basically, if you if you have your composter here and you count out 10 blocks, including the composter, and you go out, that will take you out to this block right here. And if you do that um, through all, 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 all four sides, you can have these three blocks here at each one and then join these up with uh, with these blocks just along the diagonal, just like that. And that will give you this kind of diamond shape. And you can see here that this is the area that the villager covers when he's farming. So that's going to be the size of our farm. Uh, no need to make it any bigger because he won't actually harvest any crops, even if there is farmland here ready uh, ready to use. And as we're talking about farming crops, it's probably a good time to mention my previous design. So on my channel, I've had this uh, this carrot farm previously, and uh, yeah, it uh, it kind of works in 1.14, but kind of doesn't as well. So with, with this farm, um, if you were to be, if you've got this farm already in your world, uh, it's an easy conversion to uh, at least get some carrots out of it. All you need to do is stick a composter uh, down in here. So in uh, if you want to check this out, there'll be a link in the description to this original design. Um, but the way this basically works is we have uh, this uh, this magic block in the center, which is a light level seven and all the other blocks are above that and next to it we have this observer that constantly updates that block so when this farmer comes along and plants a plants a, a, a carrot uh, it gets updated immediately by this clock and there's a hopper mine cart embedded inside this farmland which grabs the carrot before the farmer can so uh, to make this work in 1.14 the easy fix is just to stick a composter next to this magic block right here and uh, yeah the farmer will go uh, go go about his business now the reason this works uh, less less good in 1.14 should i say is that uh, uh, Previously, what would happen is the farmer would fill up his inventory uh, by farming the surrounding area. And then when he would come here, he would constantly empty his inventory onto this single block. And when his inventory is empty, then he'd go off to another block. Now in uh, 1.14, it doesn't work that way. He doesn't do that. He'll come over here, plant a crop and then walk off. And so what happens here is you will get some carrots, but the rates will be much less. In fact, uh, I've uh, done some testing and uh, over a 10 hour period, I was getting an average of 136 uh, carrots per hour out of this farm. And that's versus is um, 400 for one layer of this new farm over here. So if you want to get some carrots, you can convert the old design, but uh, this new design is much, much better. And now that we've spoken about the work time, uh, the sleep time and also the meat time. We can put it all together in this little setup I've got here. So here we have a farmer. He's got his composter. He's got some. He's got some farmland he can he can farm. He's got a bed over there and a bell over there. So uh, before I show you this, uh, let me just mention that the bell uh, it generates inside villages. So if you want to find a bell, just look around for some villages and you'll get a bell that way. The other way is to trade with some villagers. So you can get a bell from an armorer, toolsmith, and also a weaponsmith. So uh, hopefully a bell won't be too hard to come by. But let's see this this city thing in action. Let's. Uh, set the time uh, to night time. So let's do uh, time set. Let's set it to night time. So I think we said 
maybe 18,000. Let's set it to sleep time. You can see from our display and the villager promptly gets into bed. Now we can set it to, to the morning time. So let's do time set and we know that work time is 2000. So let's set it just before that maybe. Let's do 9,090. Where's your work up? And there he goes to work straight away. There he is farming his crops. And now we can set it to, to meet time, which we know is 9,000. So let's just set it to 9,000 and he'll straight away walk over to the bell. So this shows you that uh, all of those, all those kind of different parts of the schedule all rolled into one. Now, of course, we don't have to use set time to make this work. If you just let the world run, obviously time, time marches on, doesn't stop for anybody uh, and especially not for these, not for these villagers. But the next question I guess you're asking is, um, does this only work in the overworld? Does it work in other dimensions? Well, the answer is yes, it does. Here we are in the nether with a very similar setup. Um, so here we have a bed and a composter and a bell. Now we can simulate uh, the time. So you can see the time is still moving on even though we're in the nether. And uh, yeah, so let's, um, let's set this time. Let's do time set. Let's set it to 18,000 again. The villager should go to his bed and luckily his bed doesn't blow up. So that is good news. And uh, yeah, so he's sleeping. So we can see that, that still works in the nether. We can change the time to 2000 for work time and he should walk over to his composter. There he goes. Nice, nice one. Good work. And then of course we can set, we can, uh, we can simulate meet time by changing the time to 9,000 and he should walk over to the bell. Let me move out the way. There he goes. He walks, walks towards the bell. So you can see here that that's, that's the villager schedule still works in the nether. And of course it also works in the end. And for completeness, we're over here in the end and we're going to do this same test just to make sure that uh, the schedule still works over here. So let's uh, let's change the time. Let's set it to uh, 9000, which is meet time. So we should walk over to the bell. There he goes. Good stuff. And now if we change it to work time, which is uh, 2000, he should walk over to the composter. There he goes. Nice one. We know this is a working. And now if we change it to night time, he should go over and jump into his bed. <laughs> hopefully he won't explode. He will hopefully lay down here and have some sweet dreams, dreaming of carrots. And now we've discussed all the details about villagers and their schedule and how everything works, it's time to build this farm up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build one layer, but as you can see here, these just stack directly one on top of the other. So if I was to build this layer right here with these three, these three blocks, these three blocks high, uh, the next one just gets repeated on top just like that. So uh, yeah, let me build one layer and you can build yours as high as you like. The first part of this farm is to build a dirt platform and how you do that is to first of all uh, pick the block that you want to be the center and for me this is this white concrete block right here and then after that go out nine blocks in each side one two three four five six seven eight nine and on this ninth block add two blocks either side of it so that should be dirt along here now if you do that in all four corners all four sides uh, you'll have three blocks in each of the four cardinal directions and then join them up with a diagonal line of dirt just like I've done here and then fill the whole area in. Now let me get rid of these out of the way. They were just here temporarily uh, to show you the distance. Now if you come back to our center block right here, if we remove that so we've got a, a space in the middle. Now we need to have a block underneath this. So for me I'm going to place a block just like that and then inside here place four sea pickles. One, two, three and four and then place some water. So that gives us a maximum light level with four sea pickles. Now what this block does here is the water will hydrate the area around the center and the, the sea pickles will provide light to all these crops just in the center. So uh, yeah, we don't waste any space with that extra lighting or water. And then on top of this, add a composter and then on top of that, add a glass block just like that. So for the subsequent levels, you can plant the sea pickles on top of this glass block right here. The next thing to do is to place the lighting around the outside. So how you do that is you place one next to these, uh, these block of three right here, then leave a gap and then place one here. Do the same thing on this side. So next to the block of three, leave a gap, place one here. So we have that kind of configuration on this side. Now do that on all four sides around your farm and your farm lighting should look like this. The next step is to add some water. And we need to place two water sources on each side. So uh, one water source needs to go here and another water source needs to go here. Now there are a couple of different ways you could do that. Uh, the way that I like to do it is by using waterlogged stairs because this looks just a bit neater, a bit cleaner. So to do this, you place a stair facing this way, just like that, and then get yourself a trap door and place it on the side, just like that to hold the water in, then place the water inside. So it's nice and neat, nice and clean. And from the outside, it looks pretty good. And then do the same thing over on this side as well. So place your stair like that, place a uh, trap door next to it, just like that and then waterlog it and then do that on all four sides. And this is how your farm should look so far. 
So over here in between each of the sea lanterns, we have a water source and that's the same on each side. Now the next thing that I like to do just to make it nice and clean and uh, improve it a little bit is to add some, some solid blocks in, in, to cover up the dirt there and also solid blocks around these three uh, on this way as well. So do it all the way around and uh, just to hide the dirt and make it look a bit nicer. The next thing to do is to work on the item collection. So how we do that is pick one of the sides, it doesn't matter which, and uh, extend these blocks out by one each and then put a glass block in the center. Then take this block out here so you get that kind of shape. Then what you need to do is add a chest underneath here, just like that, and then put a hopper pointing into that chest, just like that. Then above that, put a hopper point it into that hopper just like that. And this is where our items are gonna go through into the chest. Now, obviously underneath here, I'm gonna use a chest for now, but so uh, you probably wanna have that going into your storage system, maybe into a waterway, that kind of thing, but I'll leave that up to you uh, for how you wanna do that. Next up, it's time to get our minecarts in place. So how you do that, just add uh, two blocks on top of the uh, the concrete right here and two here. Then add another two on here and on here. So you get two uh, two by twos, <laughs> two by two by two. And then what you need to do then is add a, a, a rail on top of the hopper and then a hopper minecart on top of that. Then you can break the rail underneath. Then get yourself a, a trap door and place it on this block right here next to the trapdoor on top of it. So that, that trapdoor occupies the same block that this hopper minecart is occupying. Then get yourself a, uh, a rail and stick it on top of the trapdoor and then a hopper minecart on top of that. Then you can break the trapdoor and this, uh, this hopper minecart will sit on top of this one and any items that go through here will go all the way through into our chest. Then get yourself a, a, a trapdoor and stick it on top of this block just like that. And to finish off this item collection area, place a sea lantern next to the glass block right here, and then place a glass block on top of that, just like that. And then get your bell and stick it on top. Now, first of all, to mention, I've used sea lanterns here and around here. Uh, you don't have to use sea lanterns. They could be any block that provides the same light level as these do. So you could use glowstone, for example. Just the, these are just here to make sure that the the the, uh, the crops uh, have, got enough, have got enough light uh, to grow. Now, the other thing here to mention is that when you do these subsequent levels on top of this, obviously these, these concrete blocks are gonna be here. So those two are those two right there. And then on top here, you need to have uh, your hopper and that's gonna be, going to be facing directly into the trapdoor just like that. And so any items you place in here will make their way into the chest below. So if I look down here, we should have a bell. There you go. We're coming to the final stages now. So the last couple of jobs to do. So the next thing to do is to add a wall all the way around. So place a two high, get a two high block uh, of blocks. Uh, I'm using glass because I like to see inside the farm, see what's going on. But on all these blocks we've placed all around the edge, place a two high wall of glass just like this. And now with your wall in place, it's time to till this earth. So go around to, your, to all of your dirt and uh, till it with, uh, with a hoe. Now do this on every single block and so they all become farmland. And uh, if, you, if all of your water is in the right place, they should all stay farmland and should revert back. So do that all the way along. And once you've done that, then get yourself some carrots and plant some carrots in place, ready for the farmer to come in and do his job. And now the final job is to get your villagers in. So uh, I'm not gonna talk about breeding villagers or that kind of thing, but uh, I'll give you a tip about how you should do this. So uh, what you should do is get your villager inside uh, the center of the farm first. Now, when you're transporting your villager from your breeder or wherever you get your villager from to here, um, you need to try and make sure they don't go into contact with any other points of interest. Otherwise they will uh, <laughs> otherwise they will take that uh, as their profession. Uh, once they're inside here though, they will only be able to pathfind to this particular point of interest. And so they should become a farm. So do this one first inside the farm. He'll become your farmer and he'll be able to go about his business. Once he's in place, then you get any other villager and place him in this spot just here. So now these villagers are all set in place. And uh, once this villager has done some, done some farming, he will come over to this villager here and share his items with him uh, during, during the periods we've already spoken about. Um, these minecarts won't be able to move because these villagers uh, are stopped by this, uh, by this um, trapdoor on the top. And so that is pretty much it for one level of this farm. Uh, just a couple more things to mention. So uh, if you do want to stack up some more levels on top of this, uh, first of all, your dirt should be at this level, just above uh, the glass block right here. So place them round just like this and remove the center one because this is where you're going to place your sea pickles uh, just in the center, four sea pickles, just like we did below and then place water inside. So that means that can hydrate though, that, that level just like that. And that's where it is, just like that, that level. And of course, I already mentioned it, but just to reiterate, the hopper here needs to point into uh, the trapdoor. And so that any items go fall, can fall all the way through, all the way down through the levels. 
The last thing to mention is that we need to make sure we protect our villagers. Now, one of the changes in 1.14, it appears, is that zombies can't attack uh, the uh, the villagers through a diagonal block anymore. So we've got this guy over here, this Oscar guy, and uh, this guy over here, this Rosie guy. They obviously don't like each other very much, uh, but even so, even though they got access through this corner, um, and they used to be able to attack through that, they can no longer do that. So we don't need to worry too much about that because all of, obviously our walls are, are diagonal. And the other thing to worry about is uh, lightning strikes. So if the, if uh, you're building this with uh, sky access and uh, the roof of this gets hit by lightning, uh, then these villagers can turn into witches, which you need to be careful of. Uh, but you can avoid that by just adding a secondary roof above. Maybe I think it's something like six or seven blocks above. Just add one more roof and then that will the lightning will hit that and that will that will protect the villagers. So that's about it. So we are done. We've built this uh, this farm up. That's one level. And of course, if you stack them up like this, uh, you get to that have this the kind of uh, farm just like this. And the last thing to mention here is that what I've done here uh, for the wheat, which is this one right here, and also the beetroot. Uh, one thing I've done here is this last level of uh, of dirt here that had plants uh, um, planted on it. I've replaced that with glass. That those three those three right there. And that is because uh, when the har when the villager is harvesting these blocks over here, sometimes the seeds from those blocks can end up in the hopper. So if you don't mind that, then you can just leave that as they are. But if you'd rather uh, not have seeds going into your system, then just replace these blocks here uh, with glass if you're planting beetroots or indeed uh, wheat. And that is about it for this brand new 1.14 crop farm. Nice and compact, no uh, redstone to worry about and uh, pretty simple to build, right? So uh, there will be a world download link in the description so you can download it for yourself and try it out before you build it in your world. And I hope, uh, yeah, you found it useful. And if you did, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments, suggestions or feedback, that kind of stuff, then get it in the comment section. All right, my geeks, until next time, I will see you later.